Hello friends, welcome to Good Tech Analytical Tutorial. Here we are going to solve unique passes coding problem. So I received a message from friend John Wick. Hi, please make video on 62 unique passes. So John Wick, this friend, make this request on unique passes coding problem. So here I'm going to solve it. So a robot is located at the top left corner of a M multiply N grid. Mark start in the diagram below. So robot can only move either down or right at a point at any point in time. So robot is trying to reach the bottom right corner of the grid marked finish in the diagram below. How many how many possible unique passes are there? So here this is an example picture. So here we saw this above is a three multiplied by seven grid. How many possible unique paths are there? So the robot is at the beginning, that's a top uh, left point, and uh, the robot is trying to reach the bottom right corner, and the robot can only either going down or going right at one point at a time. So here, this uh, also note M and N will be at most of 100. So unique pass is uh, also a typical coding problem about dynamic programming. So unique parts, we see this is a very interesting coping problem, like this picture. Uh, this is a novelty and cube picture. So here we are going to solve it. So just follow my example. So here uh, we have a robot. And uh, suppose we are going to have a 3 multiplied by 3 grid. 3 multiplied by 3 grid. That would be like this. So you have uh, three rows and uh, three columns and the robot at the beginning at the top left and, and it's it trying to reach at the bottom right so we need to calculate like, uh, the robot if it, it reach to the bottom right like uh, how many unique paths from this different way this robot can reach to the uh, final point the bottom right point so here, suppose we are robot at the beginning. So here, let's make the first move. Make the first move. That's this uh, uh, index that's a zero, zero. So for our grid. And uh, we can write down how many unique paths for each grid, each square. So at the beginning, the first move, just a one unique path. The first move, and then the robot can choose to go in either down or either going right. So robot, if the robot going down, and uh, the unique pass here is still one. So the robot can only reach to this grid, this, uh, this square from the top. That's only one pass. So if the robot turn right for this uh, square. The robot can only have one way to reach to this square, so only one. And the robot, if from the second square, going to keep going down, that's uh, just uh, also just uh, one. So robot can only reach to this uh, a point from just going straight down to this point. And uh, similarly, if a robot wants to reach to the top right point, for this example, it, the robot can only reach from one unique way. That's a go straight right to this point. And uh, here, there's a slight difference. If a robot try to reach to this middle uh, square, so robot can go either from the uh, going down first and then turn right. So that's a one way, and the robot can also go strong uh, go right first and then go down that's also one way so that's one plus one that's two so two unique paths for this uh, point to reach to this point and the robot if wants to go to this point so this square this square so there are some different um, passes can reach to this point first a robot can go straight down and then turn right. That's a one way. And the robot can also go straight down first uh, 
to one point and then turn right and go down. That's one way. And also the robot can first turn right and then go down. That's also another way. So we see here the one plus one plus one. So there are three unique paths to reach to this point. That's just the sum of the previous two, uh, two square. That's from the uh, left square and the top square. And uh, if uh, we want to calculate how many unique paths for this square, so we can see the robot can choose from first turn down, going down and turn right. That's a one way. Or the robot can first turn right and go down and turn right. That's also a way. Or a robot can first uh, turn right and then go down. That's also one way. So we see here for this square also there are three unique paths to reach to this point. And uh, also it's uh, just a sum of the left square, how many unique paths to there and how many unique paths to the top square. That's uh, just their, their, uh, the sum of their unique passes. So three unique passes to this square. And uh, to calculate the last one, to the final point, how many unique paths to here? So robot can first uh, go straight down and learn turn right. That's uh, one way. And the robot can first uh, go uh, straight down and then turn uh, turn right and uh, turn going down. That's uh, one way. Or the robot can first go straight down and then turn right, turn right, turn right, and um, going down. That's uh, one way. And the robot can also uh, go from here first uh, go right and then go down and then go down and then then go right. That's one way. Or the robot can first uh, go right and then go down and go right and uh, go down. That's uh, another way. Or the robot can first uh, go right, go right, go right and uh, go down, go down. So that's another way. So we see here they are total is a uh, one plus one plus one plus one plus one plus one. That's six in total. So the to reach to the final point, so we get the answer. So to the at the if the robot reach to the bottom right point, the robot can have a six unique paths to reach to there. And uh, we see this is uh, also just a sum of the previous two square, previous uh, that uh, from the left square and the right uh, top square. That's a uh, there. Sum their total unique path uh, sum three plus three to six. So now we can have um, like a two dimensional array to store the unique path for each square. So, for example, like here at the beginning for this one. If that's a passes zero zero index uh, start from the zero, so this one is just a one, and um, uh, at the bottom right, this passes is a just a two passes two two, and for this example, that's a six. So six indicates uh, for the grid that the uh, for the grid, the second row and the second column uh, square, that the total unique path to reach to there is uh, just a six. So here we can generalize some conclusion from this example. So we see at the left border, even at the left border or at the top border, the unique path is uh, just a one because you the robot is just go straight forward, just go straight down or just go straight right. So that's a, just a one unique path for each square. So we know that uh, for like uh, passes, uh, I 
and uh, so for the first uh, column that's uh, always one and uh, also for the passes uh, first row that each square the unique pass is also just a one and for other thing for other square we just notice that the each square is just a sum of the left square and the top square so for other for other square if we use ij to indicate its precision index that would be the left one so that would be the left one plus the top one top one is just i minus one and j so unique pass is just a sum of the left square and passes and the top square sum of the passes okay this is a very clear that we see like a from user two-dimensional uh, array so we used to store, store the how many unique paths the number of unique paths to reach to that square and uh, from the left border that's only one unique path from the top border that's each square just one unique path and for other square you can get the unique path from the sum of the left square and the top square okay here go back to the coding so here I'm going to demonstrate coding in Java so we can have a edge case uh, check first so if like an um, M like the um, row number of those and the number of the columns is just a zero we can just uh, return that's uh, just a um, um zero, zero index are uh, no unique passes and then we can initialize this um, number of uh, passes to indicate each square how many unique paths can get there so size of this uh, two-dimensional integer array is uh, the size as this grid so m and n so there are like a, uh, m rows and n columns and uh, as we just mentioned for the left border and top border that could be always one so like um, we first um, uh, to go to the left border i plus pass here number of uh, passes for the left border so each square is uh, just a one and uh, similarly number of uh, passes For the top border that each square is just a one and then we can uh, calculate like a middle square those middle square that's just get from the left and the top so here we can have a int dot form one i plus plus and uh, inside this loop there's a J start from one J then N J plus plus so number of passes I J would be the number of passes of the uh, top one 
top square and the plus number of passes of the, the left square and then so after those uh, those two for loop we already calculate that for each square how many unique paths to get there so now we can just uh, return the what's a uh, unique path for the bottom right one so that's uh, just a uh, return just we need to return number of passes at uh, just um, because we are in zero index so that's uh, m minus one and uh, m minus one okay quickly make some check to see if there are some typo so number of uh, passes number of passes we like uh, assign the one to the left border squares and we assign the one value to the top border uh, squares and we calculate then the other squares number of passes from the uh, top border uh, uh, top square and the left square and pass them together to get the the, the next uh, square number of passes and return the bottom right the number of passes okay let's click submit okay cool accept uh, accept it so we successfully solve this uh, unique path coding problem you see this is a interesting coding problem about dynamic programming so once we draw this uh, picture and we observe the like the underlying mechanism for the uh, for the grid like uh, from the left border right uh, top border they have uh, some uh, some uh, pattern that uh, indicate that always to be one unique path and then we also notice that for other square that just uh, get the sum of the left square and top square and we get a unique pass. So just from the observation, and we derive our algorithm and our conclusion. So that is a very like a typical step into procedure to solve the coding problem. So hope you make more practice and be more proficient to solve the coding problem. Okay, that's all about the unique pass coding problem. So this is a good taker. Thank you for watching and thank you for subscription. See you next time.